If you're an iPhone user, I'm sure you've heard of Siri shortcuts. How much you use it or how much you really know about it, I'm not too sure. So just to give a quick breakdown on the app. So of course, it's an Apple created iOS app that allows you to perform multiple actions either with the click of a button or a simple Siri command. So let's say before you go to work, you typically play some music, put on Do Not Disturb, uh, of course, get your directions to work, see what the traffic's like, maybe see what the weather's like. So you can perform all those actions with the simple click of your shortcut button or a simple Siri command asking her to perform your shortcut. And there's even the possibility of adding simple if statements and things of that nature. So even if you're not too familiar with programming, but you know, if this happens, I can do this, or if this happens, do this, then you can definitely use the functionality within Siri shortcuts. So I'm gonna go into my sleep shortcut, show you guys exactly what I did. So I went and turned on do not disturb and it turns on until the next morning at 5 a.m. I then have a script that asks you from a menu to either select yes or no to a question. And the question is, do you wanna play music? Um, and if you select yes, it plays my sleep playlist and then sets the volume to 3% volume. So it's very minuscule, it's in the background, just something, some white noise to go to bed to. Um, if I say no, just end the menu and it closes out. So if you say no, nothing happens. If you say yes, it plays your music. I then have another prompt and this one says, do you wanna set an alarm? Um, if you select yes, it opens up the clock app and then you can of course set your alarm. If it says no, then it just closes the menu and ends the entire shortcut. So after the alarm step, that's it. So set up, do not disturb, say yes or no to whether you wanna play music and then of course, yes or no to whether you want to set an alarm. So there are a few downsides to the Siri shortcut application. You don't have complete functionality over all of your apps. It's mainly functionality over your pre-existing Apple applications like Clocks or Maps or the Weather app, but not all of the applications on your phone. You can of course open any application on your phone, but you won't have control of it. Um, and there's even some functionality within the Apple apps that isn't completely ironed out. So let's say for your alarm, you can tell your phone, so you can ask uh, with a prompt, you know, what time do you wanna set an alarm to? And you can say seven o'clock and it'll set an alarm for that time. But there's no way to select a pre-existing alarm that you already have set up. So let's say you always wake up at 7 a.m. and it asks you, what time do you wanna wake up? You type in 7 a.m. It will keep creating an alarm at 7 a.m. So you'll just have 100 alarms at 7 a.m. until you go in and you delete them all out. There's also some other really neat applications within Siri shortcuts, like converting images to PDFs. So I'm gonna jump into my PDF shortcut, and what it does is I can copy any image, whether it's from my photos or whether it's from the internet, I can then say convert the image to PDF. So as long as there's an image copied to my clipboard, it can then convert it to a PDF, and it takes that converted image and saves it to my iCloud. So then I have that converted image as a PDF in my files. So it's a super, super simple three-step series shortcut that you probably wouldn't really know how to do outside of the shortcut application, but you can do it inside of series shortcuts. Now to go through the quick process of creating your own shortcut. So Apple does have some pre-built shortcuts already here. So let's say going to work. I'll start with this one and then add some functionality to it. So we're gonna hit continue. You can then select which playlist you might wanna to listen to. So I'm just gonna select my playlist. And then I want to include directions to work. And you can set it to show automatically before you go to work. So based on Siri, just getting to know what time uh, you normally leave for work, it will automatically run, or you can manually run, which is what I'm gonna set up. So now if I click on my going to work shortcut, it will play my playlist and then show my driving directions in the Maps app to my work. I have my work set up as the White House. It's not actually where I work, but for the sake of the video, and then I can add some more functionality to it. So maybe I wanna add do not disturb. And I wanna ask the question, do you wanna turn on do not disturb or do you not wanna turn on do not disturb? So I can go into scripting. I can say, choose from a menu. The prompt is going to be do not disturb, question mark. And then the options will be, of course, yes or no. If yes, I wanna turn on do not disturb. So we're gonna to go to 
exit out of scripting, and we're going to add do not disturb. So set do not disturb, and that will turn do not disturb on until turned off. And then maybe we want to set the volume for our music. So to do that, we just add plus, we can search volume, set volume. We're going to set it under the play my playlist and we'll set it to 40%. So that'll then play our music at 40% volume, find our driving directions, show us the driving directions. And then it will ask us if we want do not disturb on or not. But maybe we want to add the do not disturb functionality prior to showing us directions. So we can just drag and drop our show driving directions all the way to the bottom. And that's it. So play our music, turn on do not disturb if we want to, and then show our driving directions for work. So it's a super simple process to add some of this advanced functionality. Depending on how advanced you are with programming, it might not seem that advanced. But for somebody who's not super familiar, it's really, really easy, and Apple makes it that way. Um, and with iOS 14 coming out, with the functionality of double tapping the back of your phone to enable something, so you can enable Siri shortcuts to open up, let's say, an app that you couldn't normally open otherwise, or maybe you want to run through one of these processes that you have a shortcut set up for, you can do that. Um, otherwise, it's just a simple command to Siri or the click of a button. However you start it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is it's super, super easy to create your shortcut, run your shortcut, and make your life a little bit quicker, a little bit easier with your iPhone. So hopefully you can now go ahead and create your own shortcuts. Focus on something that you do really, really often that requires you to open up multiple apps. And after the first one, and after you see the overall impact and the time saved by just being able to run a simple shortcut, you're definitely gonna adopt more and more shortcuts, find ways to do things that you might not be able to do outside of the shortcut app. So I hope you enjoyed the video and are ready to go ahead and create your own shortcuts. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, any comments about creating your own shortcuts, be sure to leave those in the comments below. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. Plenty more helpful content coming your way soon. So I'll see you in the next one.